Hey everyone, this is going to be my last opportunity to do a video this week, so I thought I'd do a quick one and kind of talk about the specs. Uh, for those of you who have gone to the web store and checked that out, you've seen the final specs. But I wanted to go through that kind of line by line and, and explain a little bit about that and how we got to that point and why those are important and why maybe some of those are a little bit unique. So uh, the rest of this video is going to kind of be just voiceover with uh, you know with looking at some specs and some uh, some pictures and some things like that. I'll try to keep it as brief as possible with you know the chapter headings and all that kind of stuff so you can skip around and kind of use this as a reference material. So before I talk about specifications, I just did want to highlight that this is a premium battery. So these specifications are among the best you can find out there on the market today. And it, because of that, it is a little bit more expensive than some of the other offerings. It is also a deep cycle battery, which is more of a marathon runner as opposed to a sprinter. So the, unfortunately, this battery will not start outboard motors on your boat or extremely high current applications. So the first specification is the voltage and it is 12.8 volts and the reason that that is brought up is just because it is slightly higher voltage than a normal lead acid battery. So if you're going to use this battery or any other lithium battery to replace a lead acid battery just make sure that whatever you're powering with it can handle a couple extra tenths of a volt of voltage. Next is the charge voltage for this battery is 14.6 volts. Now, I get this question a lot about how to charge lithium batteries, whether it's Miller Tech or this battery or other batteries. And you need to match up the charger with the manufacturer. Some manufacturers, it would be okay to use 14.5 volts, for example. But with this battery, and that goes, this also goes with the Miller Tech batteries, they need 14.6 to get to full 100%. If you use a generic charger, I've mentioned that my Noco Genius in the past, uh, it has a very generic profile that will work for most lithium batteries and it will not harm your battery to use it. However, you may not get 100% full battery capacity on that charge. So in order to get 100%, you're going to need to use a constant current, constant voltage charger that will use 14.6 volts the next spec is the cutoff voltage and that means that this this is the point where the battery management system says okay we are at zero percent state of charge we're gonna cut off the party so why this is important is because um, you want to match this up to your inverter specifications for example because if your inverter has a low voltage cutoff of 11 volts you're never gonna get the full capacity usage out of this battery because the battery still has juice left but the inverter doesn't want to use it. And vice versa is also true if the inverter can handle down to 9 volts but this one cuts off at 10.2 volts then you may be complaining well why why does the battery keep dying? It's not dying it's just getting down to 0% and the battery management system cuts off. Next is the internal resistance of the battery is less than 20 micro ohms. And I'm not an electrical engineer. I can't really explain to you other than telling you this is important for one reason. And that is because comparing it to lead acid, lead acid batteries have very high internal resistance. Lithium batteries have low. So in most cases, you can't use a lead acid battery or, or a lithium battery as a direct drop-in replacement for a lead acid battery in completely enclosed systems like an RV or a boat or a car or a truck because the charging mechanisms in those things specifically let's talk about a car where the alternator is the source of the power and is what provides the charge to the battery it's not intelligent enough to know that okay now I've got really low resistance and it's just gonna feed it max current the whole time it's gonna burn itself out go into thermal overload and you've got a problem I'll be talking about that more in detail and get a little bit more of a uh, better explanation for people in a future upcoming video. So look for that. Next is the charge or discharge current. This is the maximum continuous charge or discharge current that you can do. Uh, this is pretty standard across most uh, premium batteries in this, in this space. But the recommended maximum charge current is 50 amps. That doesn't mean it can't handle 100. It's just if you're going to use 100 every single time, that's maybe not the best idea. 
it's recommended to use 50 amps or less on your charger. Now the max discharge current, this is what I'm most proud of maybe in this battery. And I'm sure someone will comment and tell me I'm wrong, but I haven't seen another competitor at all that has a higher uh, discharge current than this one. Now this is only for three or four seconds. So this would be for you know starting an inductive load, starting a compressor like on an air conditioner or a refrigerator or something like that. So a brief surge of current and then it needs to settle back down to that 100 amp limit. So this is one of the biggest things that sets this battery apart and what attracted me to top band and this particular battery was that max discharge current. The next is the internal construction and this really doesn't matter a whole lot to most people but this is a prismatic battery. It is made with individual prismatic cells instead of the cylindrical 18650 cells. There are pros and cons but one of the pros that I like about this is there's less electrical connections inside, less places or points of failure in my opinion. Here you can see an example of a prismatic battery. This is four individual prismatic cells that are all tied together to form a 12 volt battery configuration. And here you can see cylindrical cells or 18650 cells. This is what most competitors are made of. Just dozens of these things. And like I said, there's, there has to be an electrical, electrical connection to each one of those, a, a soldering point, and those can fail. So, I personally like prismatic because there's less of those. But there are also some advantages to cylindrical cells, I will admit. Next is the connection capabilities, which is another thing that sets this apart. As I mentioned in the previous video, this battery is very similar to the Life Blue batteries because it's the same manufacturer. However, this is one place where they differ. Life blue batteries cannot be connected in series, whereas these batteries can, up to four in series or four in parallel. When I was searching for a battery supplier, this is another one of those criteria that I looked at to make sure that the batteries could be connected in series, because a lot of my customers use these in battery banks where they want to have a 24 volt or a 48 volt configuration and sometimes even 36 volts for golf carts and trolling motors on boats. Next is the weatherproof rating or intrusion protection rating. The first digit is an X because these batteries are end user serviceable. You can open it up with a screwdriver and that means that it cannot have a rating for uh, intrusion protection against uh, objects like hands or tools. The last number has to do with how easy it is for water to get in the case. And in this case, it receives a rating of 4, which means that it is splash proof. It can withstand a splash in any direction. What that means is it cannot sustain continuous water exposure. So rain or submersion or any of those things, the water will get into the case. So if you are going to use this in a boating scenario or any other scenario where it may come in contact with lots of water, you're going to need to put this in a battery box. This is no different from any other battery, including the new Miller Techs, where the case is openable. There's just no way to completely weatherproof it against submersion. This is the same thing as in smartphones that are waterproof. As soon as you crack the glass and have to have that replaced, it is no longer rated against dust and moisture. So keep that in mind, anyone buying this for those applications, it, you know, if you, if you get a wave come over the side of the boat, no problem. But if you're going to have it out, store it outdoors without a cover on it and it rains, now you've probably voided your warranty. Permanent storage conditions are different than temporary. So permanent storage conditions, you wouldn't want to put this in your attic in the summer or in your freezer or something like that. You can see here with the temporary conditions, it can handle those conditions temporarily. You just don't want to permanently store them there. It's just not a good idea. Charging conditions is another one of those things that I looked at heavily when choosing a battery. Now with this battery, you're doubly protected because you've got the internal heater that is preventing those low conditions from ever even happening. And then if it does overwhelm the internal heater and just gets too cold, the battery management system will cut off. Also keep in mind, this is internal temperature. This is not ambient temperature. Often internal temperature, the battery is going to be a few degrees warmer than the outside temperature. And then discharging conditions, the battery doesn't, 
you know, it doesn't have as much of a problem discharging in lower temperatures and higher temperatures. It's just the charging process that could be problematic in those extremes. Weight is another thing that's, that I'm proud of with this battery. It is very lightweight, even among lithium batteries. It is about 22 pounds without the terminals, and I weighed mine. It is right at 25 pounds with the battery terminals attached. So very lightweight, a good five pounds or more lighter than most of its com competition. And a lot of that is due to less wires, less uh, brass connectors, less stuff on the inside to connect all those cylindrical cells. When it's prismatic cells, you have a little bit less of that stuff. Size is pretty standard. It's, it's very similar to other competitors. Um, and then for those who don't know, it's very similar to the group 27 standard for lead acid batteries. Warranty we talked about in the previous video, but every battery is going to have a five year warranty. And then you have the option to add in an extended an additional five years. Cycle life we talked about in, in the previous video, but we need to talk about it again because there's a lot of confusion. This battery is rated by the manufacturer, top band, 2500 cycles at 100% depth of discharge. That means that if you discharge this battery every single time to 0% charge where the battery management system cuts off, you would be able to cycle it 2500 times and still have 80% of its capacity remaining. Unfortunately, there are a lot of games that are being played out there by different manufacturers and different brands on how they rate this. So when you're shopping for batteries and trying to compare a cycle life, make sure that they are rated the exactly the same way. For example, here's an unnamed competitor that I'm not going to call out publicly, but they claim 3,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge. But if you look at the fine print, they're rating theirs at the point of 75% capacity remaining. So if they rated theirs on equal grounds where they were rating it at the 80% capacity mark, it'd be a different story. They'd have less cycles there. Would it be higher or lower than the, t the top band or the Jericho batteries? Who knows? But you just need to keep that in mind when you're saying that, oh, these batteries are superior to those. And then here are the BMS protections that are in place. These are basically standard at this point. If you run across a battery that doesn't have all of these protections, it is outdated and you want to stay away from it. And that's going to do it for the specifications, at least at this point. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please let me know. I'm just kind of still in that phase of communicating back and forth with uh, Top Band and kind of getting clarification on finer points and, uh, and specs and different things like that. So um, let me know what questions you have, what doesn't make sense, what you'd like to see, all that kind of stuff, and I will try to get that as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new installments of this battery series.